This is Luke 18 and 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Call law, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, by Hashem, Rekakodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of the Great Millstone. And uh, this video is going to be, shall he find faith on the earth? Because uh, there's a lot of things going on in this in this earth and on this world and the only ones who will truly have the real faith will be the ones of the elect because the ones of the elect are the only ones who understands that there's nothing that we can do we literally our hope and our faith is all in Yahweh Barashim Yahweh Shai that's it but I want to read uh, this story of the woman and her seven sons uh, they got put to death for not wanting to eat swine's flesh mm. and they had to have an you know an insurmountable amount of faith in order to go through that and so I just want to you know read that go into that this is uh, 2 Maccabees chapter 7 starting at verse 1 it came to pass also that seven brethren, which seven is number of completion, with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh and were tormented with scourges and whips. The scourges are those things, those little claws on the end of the whips. So basically when, when, when the whip is, uh, when a whip is put into your flesh, the claw literally digs in to rip and tear the skin off. But one of them spake first, said, Thus, what wouldest thou ask for learn or learn of us? We are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers. And that's how we actually need to be. That's the type of faith that we need to to you know to no matter what Esau brings on us or in this world, we need to be ready to no matter what, just just do not transgress do not disobey the laws of the heavenly father because that's what got us into the situation we are in now in this captivity is through our transgressions uh verse three then the king being in a rage commanded pans and cauldrons to be made hot so they getting ready to they they get cooking get ready to cook it up which forthwith being heated he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spake first and to cut off the utmost parts of his body and the rest of his brethren and his mother looking on. So the first brother, they cut off his tongue, uh, cut off the utmost parts, which could be which could be the extremities such as, you know, fingers, toes, limbs, you know, your penis, just anything. Cause that's how wicked they are. Uh, wow, the other brothers and the mother look. Now, when he was thus maimed in all his members, he commanded him being yet alive to be brought to the fire and to be fried in the pan. And as the vapor of the pan was for a good space dispersed, they exhorted one another with the mother to die manfully, saying thus, The Lord God looketh upon us and in truth hath comfort in us, as Moses in his song, which witnessed to their faces, declare saying and he shall be comforted in his servants so when the first was dead after this number they brought the second to make him a mocking stop and when they had pulled off the skin of his head with hair they asked him will thou eat before thou be punished so all these brethren they literally had to watch each other be tortured maimed just before they died before, before thou be punished throughout every member of thy body. But he answered, he kept his integrity. But he answered in his own language, which is the Hebrew language, and said, No. Wherefore he also received the next torment in order as did the former. So he was tormented as with uh, the first brother. Verse 9. And when he was at the last gasp, he said, Thou like a fury takest us out of this present life, 
but the king of the world shall rise to raise up, raise us up, who have died for his laws unto everlasting life. So they knew about reincarnation or regeneration. They had faith that they was going to be brought back, that they was going to live again. They was going to be quickened. After him was the third made a mocking stop. And when he was required, he put out his tongue and that right soon holding forth his hands manfully. So he came straight up manfully. Stuck out his tongue, ain't take it. Stuck out his hand, ain't take it. And said courageously, these I had from heaven and for his laws I despised them. And from him I hope to receive them again. Right. That goes back into that scripture to be. Yeah. So he had that faith, that true faith. Because he knew he was going to receive it again. And so much that the king and they that were with him marveled at the young man's courage. For that he he nothing regarded the pains. Now when this man was dead also they tormented and mangled the fourth in like manner. So when he was ready to die he said thus. It is good being put to death by men to look for hope from God. To be raised up again by him. As for thee. Thou shalt have no resurrection to life. So he know you putting me to death. Hey, we gonna be resurrected. We gonna be quickened. But you, you do after your father, the devil, Satan. So you won't, you won't have any resurrection. Afterward, they brought forth the fifth also and mangled him. Then looked he unto the king and said, Thou hast power over me. Thou art corruptible. Thou dost what thou wilt. Yet think not that our nation is forsaken of our power but abide a while and behold his great power how he will torment thee and thy seed so he like you know lord forsook us you know and you know he he's the worst you know he can bring us bring upon us the worst but you but we have but you just saying we have something to look forward to we have the kingdom to look forward to you don't because you will be tormented and your seed after you're going to be tormented. After him also they brought the sixth who being ready to die said, Be not deceived without cause for we suffer these things for ourselves having sinned against our power. So like he said, we know that all these, this this furnace, this uh, furnace of adversity, these trials and tribulations that we are going through as a nation, we suffering them for because of what we did. But We marvel, but think not that thou takest, verse 19, think not that thou takest in hand to strive against God, that thou shalt escape unpunished. So he letting you know, but you ain't going to be, you know, you ain't going to escape. You won't go without being punished. But the mother was marvelous above all and worthy of honorable memory. So those sisters out there with that, with that type of faith, keep that up. Uh, hopefully this encourages you to have that type of faith uh, for when she saw her seven sons slain with the space of one day she bare it with good courage because of the hope that she had in the Lord so she literally watched her seven sons watch her sons get tortured mangled and died all seven times all seven sons before came to her Yea, she exhorted every one of them in her own language, filled with courageous spirits and stirring up her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach. She said unto them, so she was more manly than them. She girded up her loins and, and, uh, and, and took it and said, I cannot tell how ye came into my womb, for I neither gave you breath nor life, neither was it that formed the members of every one of you. But so she's saying, hey, I didn't bring you into this world. I didn't like one like how to uh, it's like one like like to say, oh, the nigga won't like to be like, oh, I brought you into this world. I can take you out. I did this. I did that. No, she reverenced the creator, the most high power, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Hey, it's not of me, but it is of you that I that I bear these sons that I brought them in this world. Uh, but doubtless the creator of the world. 
who formed the generation of man and found out the beginning of all things will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again as ye now regard not your own selves for his law's sake. So she knew, hey, they're going to live again because they died. They died an honorable death. They are going to live again. Now, Antiochus thinking himself despised, suspecting it to be a reproachful speech. So he felt disrespected. Whilst the youngest was yet alive, did not only exhort him by words, but also assured him with oaths that he would make him both a rich and, ha and a happy man if he would turn from the laws of his fathers and that also he would take him for his friend, trust him with affairs. So he basically asked him, hey, make a, he wanted him to make a covenant with, the, with him, which he already knew. Lord, he said, thou shalt not make a covenant with the heathen that are round about thee. So we should not be going to this man for this 501c3 to, to vote, to trust in him, none of that. But, verse 25, but when the young man would in no case hearken unto him, the king called his mother and exhorted her that she would counsel the young man to save his life. And when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised him that she would counsel her son. So, being wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. That's exactly what she did. She's like, okay, I'm going uh, to counsel him. So, uh, but she, bowing herself toward him, laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn, spake to her contrary language on this manner. Oh, my son, have pity upon me, that bear thee nine months in my womb, and gave thee such three years, and nourished thee, and brought thee up unto this age, and endured the troubles of education. I beseech thee, my son, look upon the heaven and the earth, and all that is therein, and consider that, that God made them the, of things that were not, and so was mankind made likewise. Fear not this tormentor, but being worthy of thy brethren, take thy death, that I may receive thee again in mercy, and with thy brethren. So, like I said, she had that faith to know that she's that he's gonna make it. he's gonna be back in the kingdom. You know, not to worry about that. While she was yet speaking these words, the young man said, Whom wait ye for? I will not obey the king's commandment, but I will obey the commandment of the law that was given unto our fathers by Moses. So she took that time to say, Hey, I'm gonna encourage my son. I'm gonna talk to him. But she took that and said, I'm gonna encourage him to not give up, to know that, hey, this is only temporary. And thou hast uh, been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews, shall not escape the hands of God. For we suffer because of our sins. And though the living Lord be angry with us a little while for our chastening and correction, yet shall he be at one again with his service. But thou, O godless man, of, of all other most wicked be not lifted up without a cause nor puffed up with uncertain hopes lifting up thy hand against the servants of God for thou hast not yet escaped the judgment of the almighty power who seeth all things for our brethren who now have suffered a short pain remember brother this is only temporary are dead under, under God's covenant of everlasting life but though through the judgment of God shall receive thy just punishment for thy pride. But I, as my brethren, offer up my body and life for the laws of our fathers, beseeching God that he would speedily be merciful unto our nation, that thou by torments and plagues mayest confess that he alone is power. He is uh, he's the only power. And that in me and my brethren the wrath of the Almighty, which is justfully brought upon our nations, may cease. Then the king, being in a rage, handed him worse than all the rest, and took it grievously that he was mocked. So he got the worst punishment of all his brethren, because he stood so stiffly. So this man died undefiled and put his whole trust in the Lord. Last of all, after all, after the sons of the, after the sons, the mother died. Let this be enough now to have spoken concerning the idolatrous feasts and the extreme tortures. So they had 
they had that faith. Now, I go back to Luke 18 and 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, when Yahweh shall come, shall he find faith on the earth? That's the type of faith we need. We need to have that type of faith to know that even in death, you know, we cannot be hurt. Uh, I'm going to get this. This is going to be Hebrews 11 and 1. Now, what is faith? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we can't see it, you know, like we can visualize it all in our head, but we can't see it. We can't feel it. We can't smell it. We can't taste it. We can't touch it. But we know it's there. That's what that faith is. And uh, even uh, Peter in Matthew, he asked, he asked you, how was I? Hey, uh, you know, we done left everything. We forsaken all. You know, what's going to be our reward? This is uh, Matthew chapter 19, verse 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? So Peter asking, Yahweh say, hey man, uh, you know, we 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 had these jobs, we was in the world, we had our lives, and we left it all just to follow you. So, you know, what what's gonna be the reward to follow? Because we knew you had the words of eternal life. And Yahweh shall say it unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when you come back, when you regenerate it. When the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit an everlasting life. And that's what that's what the woman with the seven sons knew. She knew when she knew that she would get her sons back in the king as long as they as long as they uh as long as they went out you know because one thing we need to know uh we it's a lot of things going on in this earth uh but we need to be steadfast and know that esau will not get his enterprise his plan is going to fail. This is Job 5 and 12. He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. So Esau thinking that he's going to depopulate the world, bring out this trip, mass chaos, all that, this chip, this RFID microchip, the mark of the beast, mass chaos. Uh, he's going to be surprised because it says their hands cannot perform their enterprise. And how do we know that? through our faith in this word this word is our comforter and so shall he find faith on the earth yes he will find faith on the earth and our faith is the substance of things hoped for evidence of things not seen through this word with that shalom